Hey guys, what's up? This is Val. Welcome back, and I'm gonna do a quick demo of my new uh, product, a DAS, which is called Lightbox Ground Your Room. And this is a great photo shoot setting with real scan rocks, cool lights, and shadows, and all that. So I'm gonna walk you through how to use it real quick. So when you have it installed, you can find it in my DAS library, props, Dreamlight, Lightbox, Ground G Room, and you have two presets to start with. One is the scene uh, load with kind of like a wall aim, if you plan to have in your characters uh, leaning against the wall, or if you want them on the floor, you can you know, go ahead and load that. They are kind of identical as far as you know the whole uh, room uh, or, or look, but lights and cameras will differ. All right, so I'm gonna load the uh, wall aim version and then I'm gonna switch to the camera and pretty much, you know, as soon as you load it, it's pretty much ready to render. You just have to select one of the uh, render presets and you have a few to choose from, right? You have the main vignette. A main vignette means pretty much it's kind of like the um, standard, you know, half image uh, thing, but then you also have a vignetting effect around the edges. And if you click on just main, you will have no toning or no vignette uh, at the edges. Then you have main, uh, which is the, um, with the render preset, which is black and white. And you have also vignette on right now, right? And then you have the same without vignette. You see it's more brighter edges. And you have one that's called negative with vignette and one negative without vignette. And then you have fog on and off. You can turn on the fog and off, right? And you also have camera presets. And these camera presets will differ, right? Uh, when you have, when you're using the wall, uh, you have specific camera framing here towards the wall here the entire room and then you have one additional one here very close all right and when you have the floor version which i'm going to come back later on you have a different style of cameras and so forth then you have some lights and let me actually go ahead and load a character there's no point in just rendering a wall right and so the whole idea is that you don't have to leave Dash Studio, right? The whole idea behind all these presets is that once you have it framed, you, for instance, want to have a black and white version, you go ahead and do that, right? Or you have want to have a negative, uh, you go ahead and do that. And you can always have the main with vignette and off, right? And then different framing. This is the whole image, and you have a zoomed in version with a depth of field on if you want that, right? You can always go on a camera and select depth of field on or off. All right. Now, a depth of field is better with a blurry backdrop or background you see, right? So the thing is, the lights included, um, before I go into lights, let me just cover the walls because if you look at this here from the perspective view, right? Let's just add quickly a distant light so that I can see what's going on. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit and just show you how this looks. Pretty much this is how it looks, right? From the top view. And all the walls are movable. So you can select the wall and move that wall out of the image if you need space or make it more confined space if that's what you want, right? You can also move the right wall. You can of course move the back wall and the floor as well. And you can move the back wall course as well here right you can also remove it if you need further you know camera space and so forth pretty cool now if you need additional walls you can always click on the main wall and just go ahead and create a new instance and click on accept that will create a new node or you know instance here you can then go ahead and play with that as you see fit and you can of course rotate it all right and you can also scale it. You can also do like diagonal if you want. Pretty cool, right? And you can just, you know, move it into the wall like that so that it kind of collapses and merges, right? That kind of works with this set because it's a stone surface. So it kind of works no matter how you place these walls. They would just feel like they belong together, all right?
Neat. All right, so next we have the lights, right? And let me remove that wall. And the lights included our key, which is the main kind of frontal lighting. And looking through that light, let's go here, key. It's simply put coming a little bit here from the side and above and uh, from the front, right? But then you also have uh, a filter. This light has a filter. So if you expand here, you got a light filter. And the filter, if you look through the camera here on the, on the key light and choose texture, you see the, uh, the pattern that it produces and, and uses to create additional shadow effects, right? Let's take a look at this. And by the way, we moved the walls out of this uh, the, the place, right? We can move them back here. Cool. Now, let's move the left one back into place as well. So you can pretty much design how much confined space you want, right? And so forth. All right, so the thing is, when we look through this now, you see the pattern that the light uses to catch shadows. So if you select that light, and go to light settings here you can go for a more harsh shadow if you like you can also increase that to go for a softer type of shadow that will all, almost disobey the pattern and just do a more softer light right you can also do a lot soft lighting and that would just pretty much almost ignore this you can also remove the filter by clicking here so that you just use it with that. And of course, you can also turn off the light itself, right? You don't have to use the key light. That's pretty much it. But a cool thing about the filter is that you can move it and scale it and rotate it. Let me just go back to the initial values we had. And if you now move the filter, let's select that, right? You can move the filter here. And as you do that, you shift how the shadows fall and where they fall. Pretty neat, right? You can also rotate it. So you can, for instance, switch to the rotational tool. Just go ahead here and rotate. You can see exactly how the shadows will fall and where they will fall, right? If the face is visible here through these uh, bars, then it will be visible here as well. And you can go ahead and move that now. Shift it. So you can place the shadows exactly where you want. You can also scale the whole thing. All right. You can also make it smaller to change the pattern of the shadows. We can move it, of course, in any direction. And if you like to, you can do a cool thing. You can go into surfaces. And at the bottom, it says cut out opacity. All right. So you can control um, how much the the, 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 the filter kind of uh, uh, stays in the way of the light. So if you have 0 0.5, it will semi go through and the kind of uh, the bars you saw earlier would be less visible, right? And at one, it will just be max shadow effect. Pretty cool. Then at the very bottom, you have here horizontal tiles and vertical tiles. So you can enter a different value to have more of that pattern scattered across this, uh, this thing, right? So if I now zoom out, which means make this smaller, you can have a totally different pattern entering the girl. And for that to be visible, I take it we could make it sharp, right? So you can really place with the patterns and play with the patterns and really do whatever you like here. By the way, you can throw in your own images, black and white images here. You can go online and search for shadow maps or whatever, black and white shadow maps, right? Uh, or opacity maps uh, or alpha maps, masks or maps or whatever. Go in here and throw that in into the color opacity channel. So you can use pretty much anything here, right? Pretty cool. Now then you have a filler, and a filler, let me just select the one we had earlier, so we are back to where we were, roughly, right? Then we have a filler, let me turn off that key light. The filler provides, let me just disable all other lights as well, the filler provides soft lighting, a little bit from the front and left, 
uh, kind of from the side, right? And that's to balance out the key, but also you can use it on, on its own and you can of course move it. It's placed here, feel it right? You can just move it to any way you like to produce the effect you want. Now also here is, I'm turn it off, is a top back light. It comes from the very top and produces some extra lighting here from the top and that's placed on, on top of the um, behind the wall. All right. And if you move that light a little bit more forward, you can actually get it to interact more with the entire scene if you, if you want to, right? If that's your uh, thing, then you can do that. Then you have floor bounce, something from bottom. You can use it on its own as I'm using here or in conjunction with the other lights, just so, so it has a different vibe and mood. And of course, you can always change the color of the lights. You can click here and change the color, right? And that is pretty much it, guys. That's how easy it is to use, right? Let me, let me just quickly show you the floor version. So let's remove all together. Guys, I have a scene preloaded, right? Pre-done. So again, it looks exactly the same. It's just the cameras look a little bit different and the lights are placed slightly in a different uh, manner, right? So that you have, have a different type of vibe, so to speak. Now, as you can see, the rocks are really high resolution, right? I went nuts when I was scanning these. So they are really you know, sharp next to the feet and uh, uh, hands of your characters. So you can get really close on the floor and get really cool looking um, images, right? So guys, finally what you can do, just before leaving you for today, you have also the possibility to click on either the floor or main wall and say, hmm, hey, I want to have a different type of wall. So you can go into the surfaces of that wall, or surface, and just click in here, it has a single surface, and you can see all these kinds of, you know, um, items you can change here, right? And one of them is the color, duh, right? You can change it to something more stylish if that's what you want. So you can click quickly, you know, uh, alter the look of the backdrop just like that and you can control the floor individually right so we just because we use surface selection click on the floor go into surfaces and just change the color to blue and you can play with that really neat right but also what you can do which is really cool is to for instance go ahead and click on the wall and say hey I, I don't want the rock formation uh, or texture I want something else so you go to the preset shaders and eye array and expand here and pretty much choose a lot of cool stuff you can choose car paint and have a really cool effect almost immediately right that's a little bit over over the top but one of the things that I really like is having for instances crystal diamond glass or jade and when you're playing with these you have to be really careful uh, to not overpower the scene with a lot of lights so I would suggest you tone down the lighting a little bit and just have a single key or maybe a filler so we don't over you know exaggerate the scene with lots of lights because that will then reflect and bounce off all this uh, stuff you see here, right? And the yellow thing, it's coming from yeah, the surfaces selection here. Let me just click on that. Click on one surface and disable. There we go, all right? So again, uh, for instance, one cool thing you can use here is metal. All right, so metal here is pretty cool. We're gonna have cast iron really cool look right and you can have for instance gold or iron you know really cool looking stuff metal brush also really cool and one of the coolest thing ever is playing with um playing with rubber okay rubber started black that will have a little bit more matte look and you can also, of course, adjust it here in the editor and choose, for instance, uh, different type of tiles. So you can change the tiling of the 
map. That kind of removes the texture I designed and instead, instead gives that studded look with uh, you know the kind of uh, um, let me just go back here. The rubber, right? Cool. Now, the final thing I'm going to show you is to just simply go for an emissive, all right, so that you change that to a color. So you can have her sitting on the ground just like that, and have the walls just emit light. And clicking on that removes um, the texture, right? So it's, it's one way of using it. Then I can just make that glow and change luminous and have that project lighting onto her, which can be a pretty cool effect. Really surreal looking, right? A bit too much. But what I would suggest is that you use a mission a little bit differently. So let me undo that a few times until we get back to its original look. Or we can just click on the wall here and just select 16K or whatever you want to have, right? You have 8K, 12K, and 16K textures. Let me just use 12K. And floor, same thing. If you go nuts and can't recall <laughs> where you were, just click here real quick to go back. Now, the thing is, um, if you want to have the wall emit light a little bit more naturally, you can select it here and uh, go for emission color. Let's just say pink or something, right? Cool. And instead of, you know, going, let's say, like that, which glows everywhere, you throw in the same texture on the emission. So you click here and add the same texture. So it's going to be like wall uh, diff, right? That will force the emission to work a little bit differently so that it maintains its look while being uh, emissive at the same time. You can also change the different, to a different temperature. 6.5 is normal, like the default. And here is the intensity. Right, so now we are glowing in a fashion that provides lighting and at the same time keeps the texture intact. Pretty cool. All right. So guys, that's pretty much it. You have a really fun set to play with, lots of cool options, and very easy and fast to use and render with. And by the way, you can always add the fog, right? And the fog is not really meant to be on the floor. That kind of is a lot. It's meant for the standing renders, but you can have it on the floor as well. You can always go in here and adjust the floor height to a different value, right? Cool stuff, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Check out the links below and I'll see you soon again.